We're going to do the few lines now, and this is probably the most dreaded thing for me at this moment. Right there, you can see it. Here is the uh, wider fuel line. We're going to try to get that in there. And I just got this. This is a, a HIPAA. It's a 10 feet or 3 meters of two-cycle small engine fuel line. And the part number is X000S4. 8XM1. So I'm going to try to get that in that little hole. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to use a couple of tools to do that. Like something like this, you know. So you're going to have to try to fish that through there and there. So the first thing I want to do is, like, uh, just kind of get this out. Double packaged. Why? I'm not really sure. Sometimes you need a package for a package, I guess. All right, uh, it's, it's a thing to do is to try to like uh, get this, cut this on an angle, you know, as, as sharp as an angle as possible. Because the angle is key for uh, to get this into the uh, tank itself. So this is not the best tool for cutting it up. Okay, so like that. I tend to like to use uh, some uh, wire cutters. So we go like that and get a nice sharp angle. Uh, silicone spray is your friend. Yeah. Take a little bit of silicone spray. Just kind of get it on there like that. Right. Take this, feed it through. This is going to be your return or your return line. You just kind of feed it through like that for a while. Do that. Get as much as you can through like this right. and you're going to flip it over on the side use your um, some kind of longer pliers this is not going to be easy so make sure you uh, have snacks don't get too mad at yourself you know a lot of times the success comes from just positioning yourself in a way that you can get the most leverage. So I think I found the ultimate setup here. Right. And the right tool for the right job. So I'm a flashlight, push that in just enough. Oops. So you got a piece of wood kind of holding it up behind. Can you still see? Yeah. And flashlight, this here. You know, let's go spray this a little bit more. Right. So spray with a little bit more silicone lubricant. All right, going in there, clamp down, and grab it. Ah, oh, there it is. Ooh, man. Oh lord. Okay, that's that's pretty much through. That's not gonna go anywhere. This is just a return line, so nothing special has to happen with that. All right. And uh, what else helps that I did was this. Uh, when it was like this, kind of I spray right down there with a little bit of silicone spray. I took my uh, longer tool, anything, something long to grab. I just kind of pushed down and twist it and worked it down. All right, so let's do that to get that. This is going to be the return. Now let's try uh, getting this line in. Uh, this is going to have the fuel filter on it. So cut it with this. Okay, so we got that. And do the same thing. We're trying to get it into a 
into that hole now, that smaller hole right there. So you can spray it. Spray the line with uh, some silicone spray. Oh, we'll start the same process, you know, feed it through. There's a little uh, persuasion from above. I think that's called Jesus. Well, obviously I'm an atheist, so you can see that didn't work out well for me. So you get the idea. Let's just do that. Uh, I'll, I'll struggle with it off camera. And you feed it through. And then you try to... I got really desperate. I took a scissors and I cut this even more on an angle because it's just out of control. I can't even... just can't even get it. You know? It's like not... I just can't get it. It's just... whoa. <laughs> this thing is really hard to get in there. Makes me wonder if uh, the fuel line is too, too, too wide. And am I going to have an issue with the uh, fuel coming up and out of the tank? So the issue is getting to it, being able to see it, to grab it. See the way the it's constructed is that there's a passage, I mean not a passage, but the because it's so close to here, I got to get it farther down so I can grab it. I can feel it right there, which is a good thing. Yeah. I can feel that, but uh, it's not... Um... Hmm. I got to be able to grab it. You know, I might be able to grab it with this. What do you think? So I can, if I can feel it here... Let's see. Nope. Nope. Almost. Nope. Hold on. So it's somewhere here. No. Nope. Ah! Bah humbug. Alright, so you see? Kind of like struggling with that. Maybe that's not the right tool. Maybe this. A little longer. Let's see. Wow, that's that's not gonna work. All right, so I'll uh, I'll play around with this for a little bit. So this seriously was a challenge. I had to pull on it so hard. You can see some of it's like kind of stretched out. So I don't know. Hmm. I gotta see what what do you think? What do you think is gonna work here with the fuel line? See, because. Gonna kind of fight with us for a little bit here. So we're gonna put the fuel line on now. Right. So let's put that on. <laughs> All right, I'll think a little silicone spray might work. Oh, let's see. Let's see what that does for us. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, 
Well, that's that came out a lot better than I thought it would. All right, Houston, we have ourselves a winner. Perfect. I uh, got the fuel filter in on the small line. Okay, so this is neat because uh, the fuel primer bulb, when you flip it over, has little. It's going to be hard to see. I don't think you're going to be able to see this. But if you are lucky enough to have one of these, it says carb on this side, tank on that side. Lucky you. Kind of helps you narrow down what to do. Now, there's another way to narrow it down, right? When you push on it, put your finger on it. See, that one wants to suck in. That one wants to push out. Right? So that means that's going to go to this. So. Let's just go ahead and start to uh, cut these lines. We're going to make them a little longer because, again, you know, we just need to have some wiggle room so we don't have to work on this stuff. Do, do what we did twice. You can always cut it back later. Okay. All right. So we know that this is going to be to the tank, All right? So to the tank. Again, I push on it. All right, so you can tell it wants to the air wants to exit that way. Mm -hmm. Just like that. See if we can slide it in. Oh, that's going to fight me. Yes, it is. So this is the wider diameter side of the uh, primer bulb. Oops, 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 oops. Ah, whoa. Man, my grip and strength is null and void. <sighs> All right. Oof, man. Let's never rest for the weary. <sighs> All right, hopefully that'll stay. Okay, now with that in place, this goes out to the carb, so we got to kind of start to put things back together. Oh boy, here we go. So before we actually proceed to get this carburetor on, right, I'm going to put some stuff back. So this linkage here controls the throttle, and it kind of goes, goes like this into here. Yep, that's right, into there, just like that. And it should pull down on it like that. Now this hook here slides through. Mm. Through this. There's a hole right here. Mm-hmm, just like that. Come on, get away from me. All right. I'm depressing the throttle so I can uh, get some space. Oh, it's never as easy as you want it to be. Is 
Is there a hole in there? Come on. What's happening here? I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. Better now than never, I suppose. Let me make sure this orientation is right. Check on the other side. a hole. But there is no hole in there. Just kind of goes like that. Yeah, there is. I got it. Did you see that? Let's see? Kind of like goes in and through like that. Okay, so now that's good. We can kind of like let that hang out. <sighs> I'm about to turn into Winnebago man. Jesus. Yeah. One problem away from becoming Winnebago man. Like that. Okay, you stay right around under here. Get under. Come on, get under. Bugler. Come on, under. All right, there we go. All right, so let's leave that at that. Like that for now. All right? Okay, so we need to get the primer bulb screwed back in. So, so we have, right? We have, it's. <laughs> The stats are on your side here. You have a 50 50 chance you get this right or wrong. Half empty, half full, whatever you want to do. So I think this this top part here from our test earlier is the pressure side, right? This is going to be the side that's going to hold fuel. And uh, so we need to get a line to the from the primer bulb here to there. So we know that that's going to go like that. So we need a just a small line. To go from the primer bulb to there. So what are we thinking? Like that much? Maybe? Yeah. Alright. So I'm probably gonna have to do this a couple times just because uh, the length. I'm unsure. Okay. So I got that on that, right? And we take the primer bulb here. And this should, okay, we gotta get this being so floppy. Get those down in there. And we'll screw those down. Those were the really small, um, coarse threaded. Whoa, I see it. We're good. We're still good. You guys fine. There you go. So two of those. That's long enough. <laughs> Looks short already, doesn't it? I said size doesn't matter. They're fools. Yeah, that's not gonna get around to there. Oh my goodness. Highly unlikely. Yeah, 
No way. No way that's going to get to there. All right. Talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. This is my Houdini moment. Houdini moment. Okay. What are you, my friend? This is like a hot mess, isn't it? Okay. There's a gasket that goes there. It's, oh, almost forgot. Almost, but did not. Okay, got this gasket here. And it goes back here. Just like this. This goes on like this. I wonder if I'm gonna have a little issue putting on the little caps that were on there. I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? Right. So. All right. So. Well, we have some leeway with this one because we have a lot of fuel line in there, which is good. Get it. Come on, get on there. Get on there. Mm hmm. Hmm. All right, is that enough? Yeah, we'll see, won't we? Time will tell. Time will tell. Okay. Now we have. This over here, like that. Figuring out the order of this is not exactly easy because you got to get the, um, the like the linkage, the throttle linkage, has to get on. So that doesn't make sense. Hmm. Something like that makes sense. Yeah. Come on, get a get down. No. 
something like that. That does not look right. <laughs> I don't know, it does, but it, but it doesn't. I'm not really sure. The linkage is not going to reach to there. Oh, I'm a hot mess. I'll bring you back. After a whole lot of shaking bacon, I kind of figured it out. All right, so the uh, Walbro brand is on that side, right? And uh, so we have one more line to get in here. That's going to be this fuel line here. That one's going to snake around and go into there. So let's just like fit it, dry run fit kind of thing. See how much fuel line we need. And that's a good, that's a good amount, right? So we are going to uh, cut it like right here. Measure twice, cut once. I used to do that when I did more woodworking. Much better than I did now. Okay. So that should go into there pretty easily. Yeah, that actually did work. All right, okay. So this sat right here, like that. Yeah, all right, so carbon. This, uh, we have to pull that through some more, maybe, I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. Right. If, uh, if we think the fuel line's getting in the way here on the return, what I can do is just kind of reach in there and grab it, which I will, since it's, uh, Fairly easy to see. Famous less words. All right, got my hands on it. Eat it. <sighs> All right. Do you like that? Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so that's there. All right. Now, here's the thing. That linkage. I don't know if I should have put it on first. You know? It's one of those things. Linkage in first? Yeah, definitely, I think so. Mm. All right, not a problem, not a problem. Lift that off. Slide it under. Oh, I think, I wonder if this should be on top of those fuel lines. I don't know. Like that? Yeah, no. That does not make sense. This is not going to have enough dexterity in any capacity whatsoever to get on there. Oh, will it? Mm. Yeah, no. It's like it's going to just bend. Let's try this again. Put that back on. Right. See if we can kind of sneak that through now. No, 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 yes, no, yes. But pull the trigger down a little. Does that make a difference? Hmm. Trigger depressed. Will that make a difference? Wow. Getting that order is not easy. Hmm. Feels like...
the trigger. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. That's how you do it. Uh huh. Got it. Thanks for the tip. So flip that down. So that can go into there like that. We did it. How about that? Yeah. Are yeah. we cool? Everybody's good. Yeah. All right. So, what do you think? I think we should test it. What do you think? Nah, we got this. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So, um, hmm. I think we should test it. What does that fuel cap say? Well, you know, now's a good time to do this. So this fuel cap says uh, 40 to 1. Now, it's hard to see because it's kind of crushed, right? But there is a gasket right here on the end. I'm pretty sure there is a gasket there. At least I can feel it. It's more of an O-ring, I think. Yeah, there it is. See that? I think that is supposed to be replaced with this O-ring here. Like this. Yeah, that's what I think is supposed to happen. I think this is this is seen better days, or it's. I think. I don't know. I keep it. Let's see what happens. We put this where that used to be. All right. We'll hold on to this for a second or two. And we could possibly part with this, couldn't we? Yeah, it's, just, it's more symbolic than anything else. Hmm. Well, it doesn't hurt me to keep it there. Never mind. So that should go in like this. Yeah. All right, let's get some 40 to 1. It's a 40 to 1 fuel. Uh, we're going to just pour a little bit in there. So we need to just test this. Or could you zoom down a little? Oh, that's not my stomach. That's definitely not my stomach. Right, let's see what he what do you what do you think's gonna happen? Think it'll work? Think we got it? fuel coming in. That primer bulb's a little stuck though. <laughs> hmm, let's see. This and that. Up. <laughs> That's not good, is it? Eh? It's a good stuck check valve. I will let that recover, bring it back. It's a little dip. It's had a whole lot of interesting news, some better than other. Uh, so the primer ball recovered, right? But there's a lot of fuel that just got dumped out of there. And I kind of flipped the carburetor over. Yeah, just to watch things here. And 
It looks like the carburetor is leaking. So, what does that mean? Well, there's a possibility that clear possibility that the uh, carburetor itself is is leaking so I think it's leaking from the bottom here yeah fuels just like dripping out of this thing like no tomorrow so we might need to get ourselves a new carburetor Which sucks, but it is a reality, you know, like, we saw that it didn't hold the pressure well, you know. Yeah, I think it's leaking from, uh, from right there. Let that recover. Actually, I'll just see what's happening here. Doesn't seem to uh, do well, which makes me think that the line itself might be a little. Hmm. Uh, think about it for a little. You see what I see? <laughs> that's just. That's just. Yeah, that carburetor shot. Not surprised. So this is a new carburetor that I um, spent over two hours getting. And I rebuilt it, put the old gaskets, I mean, so the new gaskets from the other old carburetor on this carburetor. And you can take a look here, you can see this pressure test. You see how that creeps much, much slower. For the most part, it stays right uh, around 7 psi pounds per inch. So this is definitely going to be a better carburetor than the one that we had. So the other one that we had was just pissing all over the place. I'm going to put this one on and see what happens. Okay, I want to show you... Um, a way I found that it was easiest to put this all back together because it is a little challenging, right? So I'm gonna disassemble it for you. Okay, so this throttle linkage here, you put that in first, right? And then you place this into the slot for the uh, trigger. Okay, so that's in now, right? And then, and then, right, you take the, oops, oops. <laughs> Watch me struggle now. Sorry, let's try that again. Okay, slide that in. Right, and then you take the uh, carburetor and slide it onto the studs okay and then you take the choke arm you push it down like that okay. so everything goes well you pull on the trigger and that should happen got it so that's the order to get this back together so I was thinking uh, we should put this together over here and uh, part of that requires us putting some things back in the right order so this is the idler screw. The idler screw, there's a spring inside of here which comes out, but I never pulled it out. It just kind of sits in there like that and screws into that. And then that sits on top of that. So we need to just, this is a Phillips. Okay. 
just going to line that up. Well, I guess that doesn't really matter much, does it? Okay, fine. Okay, we'll just go there for now. All right, this slides on top. Th these limiters were on there. We're not going to put them back because my name is Lex, not EPA. So we're going to slide those on. Like that. And, and then, uh, that is what I believe that looked like. Mm hmm. Is that right? No, I bet you it's like this. What do you think? Yeah, that looks way better. Because I could see the screws now before I couldn't. Okay, now this wire here. Right, make sure it's down because this needs to sit on top of it. Let's push that down. Alright, cool. A little click kind of helps you know you did a good job. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four fasteners. And they are, let's see, one, two, three. Four, five, six, and I have one with a washer. Hmm. Okay. Well, well, well. Let's see what size we have here. Okay, so T. So these are uh, T T twenty fives. So I probably want to do just a little. Can I use this? No. I can use that. I just need to do a little. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. We have... No, these are Phillips. Oh, you know, I don't think this is right. Yeah. Because these have four Phillips, and then I have a... Two, two, two T25, so that means those are for something else. So let's use the Phillips. That makes more sense. See, at this point, we need to make sure we have spark because we didn't, uh, we didn't check that yet. At least not to my memory. So I'm really hoping that we have spark. Feels funny. 
Okay, let's leave that one off and just, uh, let's just check Spark first. You'll be able to see it or not. I'll try my best. Oops. Yep, got a lot of spark. See that? So let's put the uh, air filter housing back on. This is a uh, five sixteenths. These bolts are. Let's, uh, they are these. We have two of them. So, this is 5 sixteenths, so, just gonna hand tighten that. So the air filter will go in there like that. Let's just make sure everything can move. Looks good. And uh, that one Phillips, no, that can go back. Alright, so we gotta put this uh, back. I got the uh, rope inside the uh, cylinder here just to keep it from turning. We have a smaller washer here. That one goes on. Yeah, like that. And this goes on. has witness marks, so I'm going to put that in first, because I believe those rubbed against the back of this. And this labeled side with the off and on, this is going to be the opposite thread, so to tighten it on is going to be, uh, turn it to your left. our tool. Tightsy tightsy. Maybe like this right. Nope, they go that way. This way.
think we're going to get this uh, flywheel put back together. And uh, I kind of I placed a rope inside of the uh, cylinder to stop it from turning. So that's what it does. So we, uh, I'm going to put a small washer on. That was there first. It goes on that. This bigger washer goes in between there. Now this is uh, this is going to follow a um, opposite pattern from righty tightsy lefty loosey because the way the motor turns, so it tells you on here, so you don't have to worry about. There's no mystery why I know. Right, so this is reverse threaded. Get your tool. Nope. Totally forgot to do something. Let's try this again. I'll put this on. So, can put that on. No, you put this. Um, remember the the text is out on this uh, clutch assembly. So I turn to your left, tighten it up. I believe that's right. Feels good. Let's give it a couple pulls. Okay. okay, so we gotta put this chain back on, and uh, there's a couple. See, so this gives you a little bit of a hint. It tells you, it draws a picture for you, this molding. Of what to look for, and uh, I don't think this chain, I, at least from what I'm seeing, it doesn't seem to have a, uh, you know, like a tensioner of some sort. Yeah, not that I can see. Right, so I think that goes on like that, and then. And this goes on around the uh, gears, so, so I just kind of slide that on. So what I did, I kind of I slid the chain on around the sprocket down here on the clutch first. Yeah, that's. And I uh, say so it looks like I'm gonna have to push forwards a bit to like and upwards. 
Or down? What do you think? Up, down, something. I get some tension on that. I don't know. Well, this goes on. We know that. Okay. Right? Something like that. This looks a little, f a little sh sh sloppy. How are we gonna fix this? I bet you there's a tension that goes in here. I bet you that's what. Hmm. I gotta look at this a little bit here. I don't think this, I think this is missing something. You know what I mean? I think that tensions it. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna go look for some parts. So I went to look at the other saw, and sure enough, uh, that's, uh, that's a part that I believe that's where the tensioner is. So we gotta get that off. that on that one, right? Because that makes sense. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah, okay. All right, let's do that. So we need to get ourselves a flathead. Yes. Is that a gasket? Hmm. Oh, that's a gasket. <laughs> Did you see any of that? It's like the no video. Just slide right off. It's getting tighter. How's this work? Alright, someone tell me, how does this work? Man, screw it, it gets tighter.
lucky s craftsman sold a lot of these. Um, I didn't really change them too, too much each year. Just like that. See, like this. So, I think I figured it out. Right. So, that right there, that little part that protrudes, right, that goes into the hole right here. And it pushes back on the chainsaw. So in other words, you want this here to kind of slide into that hole. So it moves that. See how that moved? Watch. Yeah? Watch right here. Okay, so now that's locked down, right? I mean, no, it's lined up, not locked down. I'm going to take these half inch right here. Screws, just kind of keep them loose. Flop out of out of this. So to do that, ah, oh, what have I done? <laughs> it's like I uh. Too far. So, so I have the right idea. Slack. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, sure it doesn't look like it. So it's out more. Hmm. I'll think about this. All right, so I think I, I think I figured it out. Right. So as you tighten, all right, just keep tightening this. This will slide forwards. See, and then loose, and then that should that should push push this forward as they tighten it like that. And uh, so that's what I kind of figured out just now, right? So 
what needs to happen is I get that in there. Loosen that up. Make sure that slides into the holes. Okay. So go back. Okay, now it's connected, right? So we'll tighten that up. Yeah, that's good. See that? Okay, good. A little bit closer. Around this time, I acquire, I should acquire a lot of retarded people saying, oh, you, you suck. You probably should uh, <laughs> go and get trained to do small motor repair on a uh, chainsaw by an expert. Well, guess what, idiots? You gotta learn. And if you can't trust yourself and learn and teach yourself, then you're more stupider than the rest of the planet. So don't let anybody tell you that you suck is basically what the theme of this conversation is. So I'm gonna hold this up. I'm just gonna tighten this. Yeah, see so I pull upwards and tighten. Not too too tight because it does need to have some some play to slide. Okay, that should be good. Right? In other words, don't get discouraged dis by idiocracy. A lot, of, a lot of haters out there. I'm just, just trying to like stop you from like getting ahead in life, you know? Always ready and willing to tell you, ready and willing to tell you that you are the worst. You're not pretty enough. You're not fast enough. You're not enough. But don't let them do that to you. Okay, it's looking good. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Alright, so let's put the spark plug back. And that is uh, three fourths. Filter, filter, almost forgot. Filter back. This has the T twenty fives. Something's pushing against them. Let's double check. Have some handles to put on. It's a way to get this handle. It has 
one, two, three, four bolts. Fifth one right here in front for another handle. I have to think about how that works. But this goes like this. Um, this flat part here slides on the bottom like that. Something like that. Yeah. And it comes over the top like that. All right. We have uh, we have four screws, but I'm unsure which ones to use because some of them have washers and some of them don't. Okay. This side looks like it doesn't have washers, so let's see if let's see if that makes sense. So these are two twenty fives. This has no washer. This is a 225 also. Let's see if that screws into there. Yep, sure does. And this one has a washer. Okay, that's not gonna work. All right, so I have to find. Let me. You know what? In the second sacrificial saw that I bought for this saw. <laughs> oh my god. I need to get a T25 without a washer. That would work. Yep. So I purchased two sacrificial saws just to try to get this saw back to the condition that it's in right now. I'm gonna go the route of this Phillips instead. It's a little, uh, little thicker. The thread's a little thread pitch looks like the others. The other one I got, for some reason, just didn't feel right. So, put that in there. Okay. That one just might be stripped out, to be honest with you. I don't know. Okay, well, the handle feels pretty good. All right, now here's the thing. I have a, um, I have, this has another part that kind of comes around here. And uh, let me try to find it. Basically, it looks like this. Now, see the reason this is from the other saw. It's like a year younger than this one, but you need it. This only has one screw for the bottom here, so that's why this and it doesn't fit perfectly. This is from the Ryobi. This is the second saw of the Ryobi that I got. That one fits right, but you can tell that this part here screws into there. So uh, let me find that and see. Now let's figure this out. Uh, so, we know that this has to come off, this fastener. Okay, wow, that's a good guess. What is that? 5.30 seconds. Okay, so if you look here, right, you'll notice that there's uh, two holes. So it's most obvious that it goes like that. Let's take this off. Let's 
slide those two in like this. I've been working so hard on trying to fix this electric fan that I found on a road. It's a pretty good quality fan too, it's all metal. And I might not produce, I might not release the video, it's been a pain in the butt. All the electrical problems. So electric motors are different. To say the least. They're fun. So pretty straightforward. I guess everything is straightforward once you uh, know what to do. Well, either way. Um, it kicked my butt. Really, really, truly kicked my butt. Alright, so I, I um, I don't know if that's the right fastener, but something has to go in like that. But this doesn't seem... That was much easier than I thought. I looked at the old one. I can see that the fastener came into the back. So... What am I saying old? I meant the fa... <laughs> I meant the, uh, first sacrificial saw. Anyway. Right, turn that around. Now, one thing I can tell you about this Craftsman saw is that, uh, I think I said it before, but they, um, they made a lot of them. And because they made lots of them, I mean, sorry, sold lots of them, the market is flooded. You can find a lot of, a lot of these broken all over the place. Various degrees of disrepair. And just make sure you get the one from the same year, because... Some things don't fit. Some things do, and some things don't. Like this handle it was a was a deal breaker for me. I couldn't find it there when I got this original saw. I was missing the handle, so you know, I dug around the internet, and this handle was like thirty eight dollars. And I was like, "Come on, dude! The saw's like worth seventy bucks in its best condition, you know." So I was like, "I got to find a different way." So I got the first use saw for like twenty dollars. And that was, uh, that was a great find. I thought it was going to solve all my problems. And I got a lot of parts off of it. You saw the piston ring I got that from it. But I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to use this handle because it was just, uh, it just would have broke off with just usage. Okay, so that's that. I think I might have already done that gasket. O-ring, I mean rubber O-ring, sorry. For the oiler. But I'm not sure. <laughs> it looks fine. I, basically, I couldn't find it, is what I'm saying. But it looks fine. Alright, so we are done. We're back together, and we just need to test this. Uh, we're going to probably need to uh, sharpen the blades, or get a new blade. Either way. It Alright, so you can see uh, it's just a lot of fuel that's just coming out of the line continuously. So 
It's like it's just not stopping. It just keeps flowing and flowing. So we have issues here. I've got issues. Yep. And uh, it's going to be in the carburetor. So for some reason the carburetor is not stopping the flow of fuel. All right, we'll figure. So it's a part, and then pumping the primer bulb incessantly. Don't see any flooding happening. Not really sure why. Pull the throttle a little bit here. Don't see anything odd. It's definitely returning fuel. I don't know why it was flooded. All right, let's put it back together and just get a better feel for it. All right, it's back together. This is the, uh, this will be a more conclusive test because it replicates the environment and conditions that, uh, sorry, the conditions that it was uh, put together. So. I'm going to turn this uh, off and want it to s start up. It's not flooded. I'm a little confused. I'm not even sure why. It started to flood. It's obviously not flooding right now. I'll move, put some more fuel in there, and a soup. So I filled the uh, gas tank up with uh, a lot more gas. Still have this in the stop position. As you can tell, it's got a nice flow of fuel. I don't see the flooding that happened before, but I'm not pulling the pull start, so let's see what happens. I think uh, we can uh, try to test it like this. What do you think?
I'm a little confused still. Got a lot of fuel right here. It's not good. So the engine's getting flooded. The carburetor doesn't leak, we know that. We have spark. Now spark, this is the old spark plug, but we tested it and it ran in the very, very beginning, remember? We know that the uh, fuel delivery is not an issue. We actually have too much of it. We know that the carburetor, oh, we know we can breathe because the exhaust is uh, clean. We did redo the uh, cylinder, so I want to check and see if we have spark. I mean, um, what the pressure is going to be. So that won't stay, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to move it for you in a different place so you can see. I'm gonna pull on that. Let's see what kind of pressure we get. As you can see, we have a lot of PSI. That looks like a hundred. Okay, so the engine is pretty good. I don't know what's unacceptable. I do know that it's very good from other things I've used. So bit at a loss here. What do you think? Hmm? Okay. Alright, so we have pressure in the engine cylinder. We have spark. It's an old spark plug. We have fuel. The engine can breathe. Uh, muffler's not clogged. Mm. Oh, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. I'm thinking spark plug. Maybe maybe the spark plug is that enough spark? All right, it's like two minutes later. We're still at the same PSI, 100. So I'm gonna say we have. Lots of compression on this engine. Alright, so we had a couple weird things happen in here. I think everything else is fine. And the only thing left for me to do is check the timing on this. It could have slipped, I'm unsure, but we need to take a look, right? And uh, I noticed that the primer bulb over here now, I replaced this primer bulb, because the one previously, the check valve was just getting stuck and it wouldn't um, come back, wouldn't return. Now, I, the new one that I put on here has fallen apart, so this thing is its giving me a hard time. I noticed that there's a lot of moisture. I remember moisture, but some sort of, I'm assuming oil or fuel at the bottom of this. I'm unsure what it is and where it's coming from. So we'll take a little, a little closer look at that and, and just to see uh, what can we find out. Uh, other than that, I'm going to pull this apart and uh, we'll take a look at this uh, flywheel and make sure the key's not... Um, that's the... Now see, that doesn't look like it slipped because when that magneto when the magnet gets to here, right, it's generating a spark that is at the, the piston's at the top. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're gonna check anyway. So 
just want to make sure I'm going the right direction. fell off exactly where the key was. Key's still intact. There's no slippage. Don't, uh, all right, so don't see any issues with our timing since the uh, keyway is still intact. But I do want to take a little closer look at the, um, you can see that we have a lot of, uh, either it's a uh, bar and chain oil or, um, I'm trying to find a flashlight. I had a flashlight. I know I have a flashlight. <laughs> okay, it's going to happen. Somewhere in a very clean and organized, ah, oh, there we go, table. Okay, so the... What's happening here? Uh, hmm. Now there's a... Okay. Is that, is that supposed to be there? That big hole? You know? So, in other words, pull that out. I'll turn this crank a little. Yeah, that looks like it's a part of it. Doesn't look like it's uh, anything detrimental. I thought it was inside the cylinder, but it's not. The bottom of the cylinder, that is. All right, I am uh, unsure what that is. It looks like oil mixed with gas. Yeah. I'm open to some uh, input on this one here. If you know something, I don't know. Like, what's that hole for? Uh. Okay, so... I have no issues with timing. He's still intact. All right. I hate to say it, but I really messed up. You see what's wrong with this picture? <clears throat> I hope you do. This <laughs> is supposed to be in here. <sighs> yeah, I'm crying. All right, so th this is to stop oil from leaking out. Uh, it also creates a vacuum, and uh, you know, it's supposed to be in here, <laughs> in the bottom of the engine. So, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that I'm gonna have to separate the halves again and reseal everything. Uh, that's okay. I'll bring you back when I'm done, and we can test it together. Just wanted you to see that. Again, this belongs in there. <sighs> Send in the new gas. You can see the gasket maker maker, the gasket maker maker maker, that's funny, uh, made a really excellent seal. I'm quite impressed. I'm a little overly zealous with the usage in the first, for, them, for my first time here, but I can say it did a good job. So anyway, the, uh, the cylinder, you know, it was easy to take off the second, <laughs> third time around. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy to pull out. But anyway, the point is, is uh, 
now the uh, the whole engine is uh, the motor is removed, so we need to like, actually kind of separate this. So I don't know how much effort is gonna be necessary just to break this bottom half. Yeah. Oh, not too bad. Okay, so well, there you go. What do we got to do? We have to totally res just clean this, reseal it, and uh, put it back together properly. And I'm guaranteed that this thing will work. All right, so you've seen me uh, put gasket on this before, and. Um, Something new, nothing exciting. But let's talk about how I clean this, right? So what I did was uh, I did some uh, gasket remover from Permatac, right? And you let that sit for 15 minutes, and then I use a plastic scraper to get that uh, gasket material off, right? Once that's all done, I clean the surface off with some isopropyl, so it's all cleaned. Now what we're gonna do is um, take See now, <laughs> look, this is how it's supposed to be. You can see that both of these belong here, okay? Now, these um, these will have uh, uh, um, uh, oh boy, what do you call it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm losing words here for a second, I can do this. Um, so these bearings, right, they will sit in here and what they will do is prevent well from gas from getting past and uh, they don't need any gasket down there right what you do need to do is put the gasket the material around the outside of that and then this goes on top of it right like this yep yeah. right and then it gets squeezed down together but we're not going to put it together here we're going to um, put this seat this in the engine and then Put, put the material on top of that. All right, so you saw me do it already. Uh, the only cr difference is uh, I placed it all the way down there. You don't need to do that. That's what the uh, rubber boot on the, around the bearing is for. I'm torn if I should actually grease the bearing itself. I don't think I need to because remember the oil. There's a, there's a, some mixture of oil and uh, fuel that's uh, part of this engine. Okay, let's redo this uh, compression test and see what we got. I can hold this a little better, don't I? Hmm. Clamp, yeah? piece of wood sounds good to me yeah well, let's just clamp that down Alrighty. So the PSI is lower. Mm, interesting.